Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I'm gonna show you how to dominate on what is arguably the best support of the patch. I would say he's up there, if not better than Bane and Io and uh, whoa, Ogre. Yeah, that's the other one. Ogre. <laughs> and that is Weaver. I realized I didn't have like an updated guide on this hero. I'm like, that's crazy because this hero is actually stupid. He's unironically stupid. This is a game I played on stream. If you didn't know I'm streaming, I'm streaming almost every day now. Crazy. We're playing pubs. We do in-houses with viewers. Like literally, I'm playing with viewers from chat. You don't even have to be subbed to play in those games. It's like a ton of fun. They instantly fill up. We have a good time. I feel like people are learning, enjoying themselves. So go check that out. And now let's get into this Weaver gameplay. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we put a new video there content that you simply just will never get on YouTube we post every single day to the website it's really top tier stuff I'm very proud of what I make over there we also have other creators many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes different roles different items skill builds talent builds everything you need to know to get to the next rank so if you feel a little bit lost you're a little bit stuck click the link down below I'll see you guys there and now let's get into the video all right so the first thing to understand about Weaver is thinking about the lane and knowing the spikes. Your main spike is level 2. The reason why your main spike is level 2 is one of two things. You either take the swarm and kill them if they are out of position, or you take Gemini attack and win the trade battle because you get a double attack every 9 seconds and you play around that cooldown. So that's your two options for winning the lane. On top of that, you'll notice I went a very heavy regen build in this lane. I noticed I was against a Medusa Bane. I expected to get harassed a lot, and I'm laning with a Sand King. This hero is very bad at level one. It's, it's quite worthless at level one. So I don't want to play to essentially like own the enemy. I just want to play to do okay. So you'll see I'm instantly eating tangos. I'm kind of avoiding trades with the Bane when he's playing the wave. If Bane was here, I would hit him twice, Sukuchi through and chill. But for the most part, I'm looking to secure the range creep and go from there. So I think what my best play in this lane was, was understanding that the side pole was open. I will admit that I don't feel like they should have given me a side pole in this camp. I mean, I can understand why maybe they would, because they probably feel like they can contest it. Dusa and Bane are incredibly good at level 2, but so is Sand King Weaver, primarily because of the fact that I can take the Swarm. Either way, I almost didn't realize I should side pole, but just barely get it off. And this is huge, because the main advantage of Weaver is if they do not kill the bug, they die. They will drop to negative 5 armor and die. The thing is, what most people do wrong is they would throw a bug at this. They'd be like, oh, I can hit a two-man bug. Don't bug here, bug here. If you bug here, you can chase them down. If you bug here, you can't. That is the difference. It's really simple to understand, but it's the difference between winning your lane and being shitty. So you can see I ping out the Bane here, I wait for my Sand King to get in position, I let the Sukuchi connect, and I bugs. They don't literally have to be in front of you for the bugs to connect, for whatever reason. The bugs literally come out behind Weavers, so even if someone's behind you, you can actually hit them with bugs. It's kind of weird. Uh, I learned this from my friend, it's kind of stupid that it works like this, but it does, and Bane just dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's just kind of how it is. And you can see from there on out, I'm just going to continue to look to side pole. The Sand King's shoving in the wave with Caustic. So over and over again, I'm just going to look to bring in the lane. You'll notice when I do not have bugs, I'm not going to play aggressive. A lot of players would get this wrong. They think to themselves, oh, I just killed the enemy. I will continue to do that. Well, you don't really want to do that. You want to actually wait for your cooldowns. On top of that, I instantly ship out Matter Regen. Ship out a Mango and a Sage's Mask, which is going into my urn, because I know I want to play around that timing as well, right? I wanna I wanna basically make sure I have mana, especially when I'm level three and I'm one one one, which I get here. The next play I made here is not one I would generally make. The reason why I don't generally like TPing mid is primarily because the towers are a little bit too close to each other, right? Often the mid lane is static tier, and if you try to bug someone, they're going to disengage. It's not going to do very much. And especially in a situation where OD is not having a great time, it doesn't have any way to really keep the bug on the enemy when I bug them, especially if Astral is committed. I don't, I don't want to TP mid, but in this case, this guy is super low. I just respawn. Bugs were coming up, and so I'm basically able to kill this guy alone. It was actually a pretty huge play. It spiraled me in levels and in net worth, and it kind of saved the OD as well. So that was a nice rotation. However, I will say that I primarily recommend you generally just stay in your lane. It's good to secure the runes, contest runes, but if you can kill the enemy safe laner with bugs or position five, I think that's extremely valuable. 
And once again, just to kind of show how stupid this hero actually is, this is a full HP Bane, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Bane with Brain Sap and Nightmare. Two defensive abilities. We bug him. I think he ends up sleeping. Did he not sleep? Okay, he should have slept. He, he messed up. Definitely should have slept earlier. But he just dies from full HP. And you might be like, oh, this is this is the Bane messing up. No, this is always how it goes. Because the thing is, Medusa generally would be able to protect the Bane here, right? Medusa would be hitting us. But the thing is, because I'm the god gamer, you know, the greatest of all time, the thing is I hit both of them with the bugs, which is important. You can see I angle myself. I end the Sakushi here so that I can bugs onto both heroes. Very important because if I don't do this, Medusa can hit, start hitting us or me, and then we wouldn't be able to chase the Bane so freely, but we were able to chase the Bane freely and we get the kill. And you can see this this Havoc is creating a lot of a lot of space around the map because Odie's free farming now. The Kunkka ended up shifting to the top lane to kill me. Kind of messed up. Probably shouldn't have even died to him, frankly. Uh, but the two the Kunkka came to the top side of the map. Sven's completely free farming. Uh, Marana even ganked our lane earlier on. I don't think I showed that, but like, <laughs> you could create so much space. It's insane. Next up, let's get into items. So generally, in terms of items, you're just going to be rushing your stat items. Like, you want to be as tanky as humanly possible in the early game. This is at least how I like to view the hero. And the reason why is, as long as you're alive, you're doing damage. You know, your spells just... They're just damage like that. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. Like you just want to buy raindrops. I like to go these items every game. Raindrops, wand, urn, fluffy hat. And the reason why I like this is it puts you at a, a range where most combinations of heroes cannot burst you because with wand charges and raindrop charges, it's just too much HP. It's just too much HP. And so, yeah, it, it essentially allows me to just play like a psycho, which is what I want to do. On the note of playing like a psycho, take a look at this clip here. I built up a lot of urn charges now and the enemy goes on my team. Once again, I'm going to look, look to lead with bugs basically as soon as possible and hit as many enemies as possible. This ends up hitting the Medusa and she actually had no mana going into this gank. I guess I realized that. I'm not exactly sure how I realized that. I think I just realized I wanted to bully her regardless of whether or not I could kill her. Reason why is if she's extremely low on HP, she'll have to go back to base and you know, just not farm. Either way, though, I, I kind of recognize quickly here. Oh, she doesn't actually have mana because she was dying very quickly. And yeah, we actually just kill her from full. Just unironically kill the Medusa. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is this is just we, what Weaver does. The thing is, you want to run through their jungle. You want to just run at people over and over and over again, because look at this clip here. I run up the hill. I'm like checking the hill for a D ward. I get arena and I'm just fine. I'm full HP even. <laughs> Like, I'm just totally fine. And on top of that, it ends up setting up, actually, for a kill on the Mars. I didn't really believe in this kill originally because I didn't have bugs, but we commit on him and he dies. And this sets up from the fact that he just doesn't have Arena and didn't have Spear. Actually, no, he did have Spear. He just missed it. Let's get into a quick another little team fight here. So this was a fight breaking out on the top side of the map. A couple things to note about this fight. So number one, I don't want to bugs just for a singular kill on a low value target. If we're going on a Kunkka, I will absolutely bugs him. But, you know, killing something like a Bean here, you can see I, I wasn't looking to commit. Instead, I'm going to Sakuchi forward here and line up the two man bugs. Once again, sit next to the Marana, angle towards another hero. And both of them know they can't actually hit the bugs because <laughs> Big Daddy Sven is on the way. They're going to come cleave him. Give him the cleavage. But uh, yeah, look at this Marana. Because the Sven gets X'd, but this is the thing. Look at her armor. She's at negative five. <laughs> negative five. I run through. Hit. <laughs> 114. I hit for 83. My auto did 114. 114, guys. I hit her for 114. You might be like, oh, speed. That's only 30 more. It's like, guys, you don't usually hit for 80. When you have 80 damage, you don't typically hit for 80, right? Let's look at a hero like Marana when she has regular armor. She has 37% physical resistance. 37%. That is what? Like, I'm going to lose like 20-ish damage, 25 damage on my 83, right? I'm going to lose like, you know, that significant, that amount of damage. I'm going to lose like 26, 27 damage. I'm hitting for 30 more. That is a 60 damage variant, right? That's a sacred relic at 12 minutes. That's obviously significant. And pretty insane, considering your whole team gets the amplification because it's just armor reduction. And in this fight as well, this fight kept going on. It was kind of a weird one, but once again, I line up a really nice bugs on a three. Honestly, when I hit like a three man bugs like this, man, I, I mean, we were going to win the fight even if I didn't. To be honest, this was like kind of a wash, but still like if you can hit three, four man bugs every team fight in early game, man, it is very unlikely you're going to lose the fight. On that note as well, look at this poor Marana. When you get to your vessel timing and you bugs, you just annihilate. Here's the execution. It's very simple, okay? Um, number one, you don't generally want to end Sakushi next to the enemy. So, like, 
I do do that here, but that's just because I'm like mega over farmed at this point in the game and I'm super tanky and I have time lapse. But yeah, this Marana knows she has to completely leap away. I kind of messed up here. If I just vesseled her again right here, she would have died. I, I kind of didn't want to use the charge, but it was just super greedy. Should have vesseled her. She would have easily died. I ended up over committing and dying, which was definitely a bit of a mistake. They did have to use a sentry to kill me and commit pretty hard. They also had to bring four heroes here. I also could have actually gotten off time lapse, so I guess a bit of a mistake on my end. I like literally, I, I honestly probably could have lived there, <laughs> which is so crazy. But if I just didn't panic and I clicked time lapse, I didn't think I was going to get bursted. I, I would have lived. But either way, at this point in the game, you're going to see I'm just going to generally run at the enemy. I don't want to run at them in a way where like I'm going to get 2v1. You kind of want to look for isolated targets because if you find isolated targets, like when the game isn't team fighting, right? Like when you're team fighting, you want to look for multi-man bugs. When you're not and the game is just kind of like static, you just want to look for people who are separated and just bully them essentially. Just like being a constant annoyance that's baiting attention, that's baiting rotations, that's preventing people from do what they, doing what they want. Also just giving vision, like I'm constantly giving vision of this Marana and this Bane. And uh, you can see, like, this Marana's gonna... I think I dive here and kill her. Yeah. She just dies, like... It's crazy, man. Yeah, like, when you get ahead on this hero... I mean, yeah, I'm 9 and 4. But, like, my net worth... Okay. <laughs> I actually have higher net worth than their Mars. Oh, my God, dude. My, I'm, like, the same net worth as my mid. <laughs> it's, like, pretty normal, though. Because you don't, you don't really die on this hero. So, like, your net worth kind of just continues to accrue in, in, when you get ahead. Um... But man, every time I play Weaver, I swear these the games look pretty similar. Even this Kunkka, I miss my bugs, but like he had to panic so hard when he gets gone on here. He like pre BKB is probably a mistake on his part, but I kind of understand why he did it. Another great thing about Weaver, why, why this hero is even more busted is here. I had an arcane rune. Not really why this hero is busted, but uh, yeah, my swarm cooldown with arcane rune is 14 seconds. And it's one of the best Roshan abilities in the game. Number one, because it tanks Roshan if you need it to. Number two, it reduces Roshan's armor just as quickly as it reduces on heroes. So Roshan just starts to get, well, quite shredded actually. And uh, yeah, it just takes down very, very quickly. It can bring Rosh, I don't know the exact number, but I think it can bring Rosh close to close to your armor, if not negative, uh, if it stays on long enough. I don't know how long it stays on actually. How long does it stay on? 16 seconds? So it can reduce armor, I think by about 20. So it would probably be bring Rosh around uh, to about two armor. Uh, which is obviously low compared to his usual like 25 at this point of the game. <laughs> this game was pretty funny because like, I don't know, my team didn't want it. He just Sven didn't want it, which like I understand because it's kind of a trash item on Sven. Like he doesn't really want to go high ground. Um, and if you pop God Strength and die with Aegis, you just lose it. I don't know why the OD didn't want it. I guess it's because he's poor and he was like, I'm like a support this game or something. I have no idea that this guy, he was struggling to say the least. <laughs> uh, but either way, I took the Aegis, you know. It's your, you know, people understand, they understand, it's the Game Leap difference, you gotta give speed from Game Leap the Aegis, it's, it's only right, but uh, yeah, this fight was a bit weird, you can see the general just in the fight is just constantly, once again, don't end up in the middle, the worst thing you can do is just end up in the middle, just find people to go on on the outside of the fight, for instance, this Marana here, I go on her, I medallion, just kind of kick her out of the fight, I zone her out, she commits on my Sand King, drop the vessel, she dies, time lapse, stay alive, kite up to the outside, Kunkka BKBs, Obviously just gonna kite that out. If he goes back in, I'll go on him. And yeah, the fight just, like these long fights really favor Weaver because like my bugs come up again. I get to kill him. Medusa was actually out of mana. I actually could have dove her here. I didn't realize because I had Aegis, so probably could have dove. Felt like it was a little bit too deep under the tower. Honestly, even not killing her is fine. Like look at what this guy's doing. <laughs> He just has to like sit in the trees and the TP base, which is like kind of trash because then he has no TP for, you know, 70 seconds. He has to buy another one, which is on a hundred gold investment, which actually adds up. And yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's actually so easy to collapse on the map as well when people don't have TPs because if we run at bottom, this Medusa has no TP. Man, I feel like that's that's crazy, man. I, I almost feel like after looking at this, not killing Medusa is almost just as good as like killing her, if not better. Because like now we run bottom, where does she go? I don't even know where she goes. Here, I guess. Like, <laughs> like great, you know, great. You're in the trees. It's like, it's like basically being dead, right? It's the equivalent of being dead. I mean, she's not farming anything. Now she's just in her base, has to go to the high ground. Rough, man, it's rough. All right, the game ends here. I have no idea what this play was for my team. This was some YOLO garbage. My Sven didn't have Aegis. Sand King doesn't have Aegis. Uh, <laughs> This is some really, some trash, but Sven had a Satanic, which fortunately he was able to get off. <laughs> wait, why did he heal from that stun? Well, wait, what, what did he even heal from? The creeps? 
Oh, he must have hit the creeps. Oh yeah, good play. Good play. You you heal a lot when you say Tannic off creeps because they don't have armor, so you heal for what you do damage, which is why like sometimes if you say Tannic, you don't want to really hit high armor heroes because I believe that's how it works at least. You guys could correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm pretty certain that's how it works because when you cleave off creeps, you just literally full heal uh, instantly. So good value, good play from this fan. I can also solar crest him, so his attack speed is extremely high. And uh, yeah, pretty good fight once again. You can see, I generally don't end my Sukuchi in the middle. I Sukuchi through, go to the outside, and I can look to like bugs across here, right? We got the bugs onto the Dusa. She's starting to drop an armor. You know, it's not honestly, in the mid to late game, bug, you, you generally want to bug the low armor supports. Like bugging a Medusa is, it's not terrible. You can see she lost like eight-ish armor, but she has attack speed items to kill the bug. She can even split shot off the bug. So it's, it's kind of worthless on like a hero like Dusa in particular. You really want to like bug the Maranas who have like nine armor. Even here, oh my god, I didn't even realize she was bugged. <laughs> she had like uh, she had like two armor instead of eighteen. But yeah, like these heroes, the Banes get destroyed by it. Marana's not too bad; she can leap. But like even then, people forget about it. Like that whole fight, she clearly didn't realize there was a bug on her, um, so she forgot about it. This Mars is not a bad example because his armor isn't that high and he has bad attack speed. So like these are the heroes mid late game you want to get it on. And yeah, you're just gonna have insane impact. Also, you might be wondering why I go crest. I honestly don't like Ags on this hero. I, I personally find that it's just like overrated, uh, which sounds insane because it's like an Ags time. It's like literally you get to give your teammate an Aegis. The problem is the cast range is shit. So half the time when you end up using it, you just like die because you have to like walk melee range to cast it. The cast time is kind of long. So sometimes you just miss. And then it's like compared to an item like Crest, like right here, I have this Crest. I wouldn't have my Axe right now because Crest is 2,600 gold. Axe is 4,200. That's what? 1,600 gold difference. So it's one of those things where I feel like hitting this earlier timing on an item like Crest where I can, you know, either buff up my Sven or drop an enemy hero to, what's the armor reduction? I think it's six. It used to be 10, that's crazy. It literally used to be 10, that's insane. Um, but I can, you know, if I bug a Bane and then I, I Solar Crest him, he's just instantly negative, you know? And he's just gonna get shredded by me, frankly. And I don't even hit hard. All right, that's gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you guys are inspired to play this hero. The main things I can really stress to you are buy stats, okay? Please buy the items I showed, please, please, please. And then when you are laning, make sure you are getting max value out of the bugs. The way you do that is by side pulling and making the enemy team go towards your tower. Don't bugs them under their tower. If you can synergize any sort of disable or just damage with a bugs when the enemy is out of position, you will get kills, you will snowball, and you will probably win your game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.